Hey, I'm Anfa. The video you're going to watch has been recorded 10 months ago, so quite a lot of things have changed since then. It's been sitting on my disk for so long because there's a lot of footage and it didn't go as planned. The idea was to record an entire project, start to finish, of me making sound effects for a video game. Since I sit down with the video reference provided from the client until I export the final versions of the files. That didn't happen because I've encountered technical difficulties where the recording setup was fighting the production setup and I wasn't able to continue recording all the way through because it was taking too much time. So I had to cut my losses and finish the job off the record. However, there's a lot of things that have been captured and I think there's a lot of interesting information there that you could learn from. Now, it still depends if you want to watch that or not, because there's a lot of work involved in editing this footage. So this is going to be either a first and a last video or the first video in a series. And how long is the series gonna be? Only depends on how much you wanna see the next episode. So please let me know after you watch this, leave a comment, leave a like, whatever. Let me know that you want to see that you will watch the next part because maybe I should focus my energy on something else and just keep this footage shelved. Sometimes the best idea is to let it go. Let it go, let it go! All right, that's it, enjoy. Oh, Hi, I'm Anfa. Uh, I'm a sound designer, a music producer. Today, I want to show you how do I make sound effects for video games. I got a little job from GD Quest, which you might know, and he agreed for me to uh, record the whole process of me making sound effects for his game and publishing it, so you can learn from that. And I think that's really cool because, uh, well, I can't show you my workflow on other client work I'm doing, but this is a very nice exception. And you will be able to see the raw workflow and everything that goes into creating sound effects, original sound effects for a video game using nothing but open source software and Linux, which I think is pretty unique to see because not many people seem to know about what you can do with free and open source software. All right, to begin, uh, I have obtained some video reference for things that I need to make sound effects for. So I have my video reference and there's stuff like, you know, uh, a spaceship shooting lasers, a spaceship shooting a be laser beam, um, user interface starting out the game. So the first thing I want to do is concatenate all of these references into single video file and import it into my DW, which is Ardor. So we're going to use that as a reference and all the sound effects are going to be in a single Ardor session. This way we can very easily reuse things if we need so and it's going to be very easy to control. And also Ardor is like, it has the video timeline support and um, you know, exporting multiple regions, etc. It's it's very well suited for designing sound effects. How I'm gonna do this? Well, I could do it with a video editor, but I have a feeling we could use something like FFmpeg to do it quicker. But maybe not. I'm gonna start up Olive Video Editor. Uh, just turn on compositing. So here is Olive, here is all my video reference. I'm gonna control A, select it all. And I'm gonna drag it into the new project. Now let's create a, a new sequence. Let's make it 60 frames per second, full HD. I don't know what, what is there, but it's probably nothing else than this. Okay, the order isn't really important. I guess we could sort it out by uh, what is 
like, I don't know, separate UI stuff from, yeah, we could separate maybe UI stuff from, from weapons and, and some other actions. Okay, we can, we can uh, organize it a little bit. It's going to help us along the way. So, okay, let's see. Weapons. Let's start with the weapons. Uh, unloading. Okay, moving. All right. Exploding. Mining. Landing. Unloading. Opening. And UI. Now, I hope there's going to be enough space for all the sound effects to have all the tails play out because I don't want to have a situation where another reference is in the way and I'll have to, like, you know, yeah. Okay. Okay, there's plenty of room. And when it's going to end. Okay, I'll add a little bit of pause there because that there's not much. I might want to add a little tail there to the sound effect and I don't want the other reference to just... Okay, I guess landing and starting up is in the same reference, okay? So I'm gonna also extend this and give myself some room. Just in case. It's better to have more room than not enough. Okay, I think a little bit of room could do, but not too much. Okay, I think that's good. That'll do. What's that? Ping. Beep. Okay, I think that's that will do. <clears throat> Let's export this out as a video file. I'm gonna hit Ctrl M. Do that, and uh, the format really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna make sure it's a bit higher quality. There is no audio. <clears throat> Entire sequence. Okay, and now I'm going to just effects reference on a uh, all reference. <laughs> all right, let it export. And once it's done, uh, I can import it into another session, which I can already create. So, okay, SFX, I'm going to create a new session here. I'm going to copy this path. I'm going to start Ardor. It is loading. All right. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Ardor 6.3 has been released. <laughs> I think I need to update that. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was unexpected. I'm compressing Ardor. Uh -huh. All right, so I have installed Ardor 6.3. That's a, that's a new thing. Uh, I haven't run it before, so it's going to be a little bit of an possibly a little bit of a uh, of, uh, surprise. Let's see what, what, what happened there. Um, all right, and this is going to be 2D Space Game SFX. That's what the Ardor session is going to be called. And let's see if our video exported. Yes, our video reference is exported. I'm going to save this project just in case. Uh, because maybe I'll need to revisit it. Okay, so here we are in Ardor. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go session, open video, and now go to 2D space game. Well, reference, alpha, all reference. 
and this will open up this dialog of importing our video reference. Yeah, it's pretty much gonna transcode the video to a format that it's easy to scrub, basically MJPEG and video codec that encodes every frame independently in JPEG compression, which provides poor quality, but extremely fast um, response. And that is very important because you want to be sure that if you go to a certain frame in your project, that the video file is going to show you exactly that frame and not two frames before because it got uh, like confused by the inter like frames that are interpolated from different data of previous frames and sometimes they're bi-directional frames or reference frames after and before in this video stream. So MJPEG uses none of that. It's a intra-frame codec. That means um, every frame is encoded separately as a distinction from inter frame codecs, which reference different frames and, and reuse information from them, which of course helps reduce the file size, but the file size is not a consideration in here as much of a consideration. What is a consideration is performance of playback and perfect precision of seeking the file. All right, so here is our video reference. Uh, this is XJDO, so it's a video player that syncs with Jack. Actually, I can use a mouse wheel to just make this smaller. So this is our video reference, and it it will automatically stay on top. So everything, whatever I do, uh, this, this is gonna be visible. And now you can see we have all our reference and I can easily scrub it. And that's great. Okay, next thing I wanna do is make sure that the audio from Ardor is being recorded. All right, let's see what we have here. Okay, the laser beam is first. What I want to do is synthesize a pretty classic sounding like laser effects because um, you know I can go very like over the board and, and make an insane like very weird sound design. But sometimes people don't identify it because it's not cliche enough. And it's like, oh it sounds cool, but it's not a laser beam. Because they identify a sound of a laser beam with this pew pew. Uh, or something like that. Well, not necessarily. And I want to give this some really nice detail. But also, the, the aesthetic of this uh, game is very cartoonish, so going for extremely realistic sound effects is not probably going to mesh well with the, with the video visuals. And also, I would like to, like, use this... Um, like have these particles kind of uh, give them own, their own sound. So it will be like a little bit of chimes that would be less left over. So I think what we also need is, because the player can start this laser beam and it probably can you know last quite a while. So I think what we need is three separate sounds. First sound for the initial impact. Okay. Then we need a sound that is sustained loop. And then we need the sound of retracting the beam. So, and then it's going to be this, these uh, chimes also. Uh, yeah, imitating sounds with your mouth helps a lot because I can kind of prototype things before I actually synthesize them or record some stuff and, and make it real. So it helps me prototype things and imagine what I want to make, and also check, check the timing before I, I lay down anything. So mouth sound synthesis is useful in sound synthesis because you can prototype very quickly. All right, so we're going to have... Um, I can even mark these sounds already. And I'm not sure if we're going to... Okay, this dude, so it starts at this frame. We can also change to time code. Okay, are we in time code? Uh, we actually don't need beats or bars. We're not going to actually use that kind of stuff. Uh, and I would rather snap to timecode. Oh, wow, it also changes the grid display. I didn't know that. Okay, so at this time, at this frame, this is the first frame of, of this sound effect being made. So I'm going to create a region there, a CD region. I'm gonna call this uh, weapons. 
beam start. All right. Maybe I should use underscores instead of dashes. Maybe that's going to be better for for GD Quest to program this in. All right. I guess our start needs to be around this long. Now I'm thinking to myself, we'll probably need to duplicate this so I can create the sound effects of the start and the middle and the end and like have them not overlap on my timeline, even though they will overlap in the game. Uh, I could do it by just, you know, designing them in sync with the ref with the video reference, and then I will just move them a little bit off so so they don't overlap for the export. So I also don't have to care about, you know, um, muting different tracks and like exporting in few passes. Like what you want to do is make sure that if you hit export and select the sounds you want to export, it's done. It's there. You have the files. You can directly import your game so that as much as possible should be done in, in this session. At least that's what I like to do. If you have to loop some sounds, uh, well, we're going to be looping sounds, so you're going to see how to do that also. Uh, there's a few approaches, quite a few different approaches, and you can do it in Ardor, uh, or you can do it like later in Audacity. But then every time you update the sound in Ardor and like, re-export, you would need to re-loop that sound in Audacity. And so I'll try to avoid it, and I figured out a way to do it inside Ardor. Mm. And yeah. All righty. So uh, let's think what we can use. Uh, what synthesizer could be good for that? Mm. I'm very, like, tempted to go with Surge, but I'm not sure if... Uh, actually, I'm going to go insert an empty track and see if surge like how surge works here i think surge works pretty okay let's see lv2 lv2 version okay let's see because you know if if it doesn't work well i'm gonna retract and and, and use something else maybe it's infusion let's maybe enlarge the ui a little bit or okay let's move it up and now i'm gonna also disable strict io so uh so we have the audio input, output. Now I also want to assign my MIDI keyboard to be uh, control surfaces. Oh, no, no, it's something else, I believe. MIDI, yes. Uh, MIDI inputs, uh, Oxygen 49, music data. Oh, well, where, where is it? Music data and follow select. Oh, wow, when you click it, 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 it scrolls. All right, never mind. Now if I just press a key, it's going to play automatically. I don't have to do anything else. Just. <laughs> mm, by the way, I'm going to check if it records. First thing, I'm going to make a MIDI region and put a MIDI note. So it starts exactly on the frame that this animation starts. Oh, and also my region starts too late, I guess. So if I do, is that moving by frames? Yes, it's moving by frames, okay. Oh, so we're snapping to frames now, that's good. I mean, yes, we need that. Uh, oh, so I can snap to frames. Oh, there is a frame, okay. Yeah, actually I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna put the region start before because we're gonna have some overlap and Ardor will truncate the silence from the start and the end automatically for us. Mm. All right. Now that sounds nothing like a laser beam. Uh, yeah, that's one one problem with search. Okay, now the, we're not going to use effects because effects are broken and we can use them outside. Mm. Let me think. Okay, let's maybe enable auto return. It's loud, it's a bit loud. Okay, that's better. 
Okay, so now I have auto return. I can. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move this video reference up because it's going to overlay with my face and the video. All right, let's uh, use an OS. Maybe, uh, maybe let's use an FM Slater. Now, I want to have this pew, so I'm going to use an LFO and affect the pitch of the oscillator. Of course, we don't want it to be in the LFO mode, just an envelope mode, so I'm going to reduce the sustain. And also, it seems we are right click. I'm going to extend the range, so this actually has much more effect. Yeah, that's more like it. I'm going to remove, re reduce the decay. Okay, it sounds a bit more like a laser beam. Also, there is this deform, f which can f help us bend this. Now, this is pretty okay as a base. Let's try and see what we can do with the FM stuff. So I'm gonna... All right. What if I do the ratio below one? All right, yeah. Okay. What if we... What if we use this to change the ratio as we go? All right, yeah, that's, that's a fem for you. Let's do that away. That's interesting, it's screaming. I think some of that... Some of this stuff is very cool. Uh, so I want to maybe modulate the amount of the FM modulation. And uh, also use it as an amplitude, uh, sorry, envelope and maybe like have some attack and then have some decay, but make the sustain zero and... All right, let's uh, up this. I think our note might be a bit too short, so I'm gonna extend it. All right, well, the thing is, it's, it's gonna be a sustained sustained laser beams so um, uh, so we need to have something that will oh, oh I I shouldn't shouldn't be closing and opening the, the GUI I should have just you know switched to it this is too long oh no this one is too long okay all right Okay, let's use our amplitude envelope and just drop the sustain. May I please the release uh, decay? Okay, I think this is a nice start. Like this is the starting sound, and then we will have the looping buzz that's gonna like go and uh, like be there for the whole thing. I'm gonna call this uh, laser beam start. And let's just duplicate this track. Yep. Okay, now where does it end? I think... Wait, we're skipping by seconds, not by frames that's not the same oh my goodness cd frames no not cd frames i want i want time code frames what okay it's a bit weird
All right, this is the first frame that's ending the animation or, or the laser beam is fading there. So I'm gonna use this as my end point. And also I'm going to, oh, why did I call it that way? Okay, beam middle. And I'm also gonna copy this and call it beam end. And what I'm gonna do is just move it so it starts where the beam ends, where the animation starts to fade. It's gonna be... Yeah, and we're gonna change this later. For now, let's play with this middle sound, with this middle beam. All right, so first thing we need amplitude sustain up to max. We don't really want these envelopes affecting the sounds, so I'm going to clear all voice envelopes. Routings. All right. Now, I think what I want to do is actually go for, not, not go for an FM sound, but maybe use a sawtooth. And I want to do two sort of waves that will phase in and out. Uh, we could use this macro. Yeah, we could use this macro to affect the pitch of two. Maybe not extend the range. Just going to do one up or one down. And now... Oh, we've got one muted, okay. All right, let's just put this whole thing down to octaves. <laughs> it's way too much. <laughs> yeah, kind of a release bass. Now, what else I want to do is have a kind of sub bassy thing, which could be a fem, and I think it would be nice if it put pulsate. So, um, so we could actually have an. Oh, what is this yellow arrow? What does it mean? Ah, it means that we're editing it right now. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's pulse setting on its own, even without any intervention. Okay. Let's see what we can do with the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, no, no, no. We don't want to change the musical. Release. Okay, we want this to be an... Um, yay. No, not the form. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna me solo this sound. And you can hear it's. We're getting some nice, um, nice things happening there. I'm gonna move the first two stuff to filter one, and I'm gonna make it a band pass. Here it is. And the second, the third. Oscillator, which is our FM. Ah, it's oscillating, okay. All right, could be oscillating, but not as much, please. I think we might need to move this up a bit. How about... Sounds cool, but it's a little bit dark for the for the visual aesthetic, like I'm not sure if that's what we should be doing. Uh 
Um, I have a different I have a different idea of what we could do that would sound more cartoony for this game. Uh, so let me maybe just uh, close this for now, and I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to mute this for now, and we're going to play with this different version, and I'm going to make an alternate version. Ah, no, wrong, wrong place. Actually, what I want to do is also init the patch, because... Please init the patch, init the patch, yeah. Init. Oh, no. Ah! Is there an... How do I init patch? Holy snap. <laughs> Reset parameters to defaults. Okay, uh, I guess that's how we do it. All right, um, so I'm going to solo it. Okay, it didn't reset everything, but it already sounds uh, less like what I've had before, and that's already good. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have some modulation here. All right, that's, that's very much this. Mm, okay, what I want to do is FM oscillator 1 with oscillator 2. So let's do this as this, this is going to be sign. And oscillator 2 is going to be saw. Yes. Okay, I need to stop enabling FM. I did the LFO. Yep. Yep. Yep, just a few octaves lower. Yeah! There's your freaking laser beam! LASER FREAKING BEAM! Okay, what happens is... Mm, this oscillator is providing us with a very, very fast... Uh, it's kind of like an LFO. Actually, we could do this with an LFO. I wonder if we can affect this... It doesn't sound as, as nice. Ooh. Width. Shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's the thing. Okay. Now, uh, what if I change the absolute pitch oh absolute oh oh it's way too low oh that's the absolute pitch okay <laughs> interesting what if i insane uh, enabled unison oh okay it starts to be a mess I guess it would be better to enable unison on on the thing itself. I think we need a bit more frequency in here. Ah, that sounds painful. I think I don't want to have this sync on. All right. Uh, also, are we running a filter? We could be running a filter. What about a comp filter? Yeah, resonant. Holy snap! That's cool. Ah, all right, all right. We are we're doing a lot of things with this. Uh, is was that an all pass filter, or is it just a neutral? Oh, it's off. Okay, it's not an all pass filter. It's off. I'm gonna disable that. Oh wow. Ah, I keep clicking on this. All right. Yeah, 
Okay, that's a bit, bit much. What about less of that? All right, I think it's a pretty sci-fi-ish, but still pretty cartoonish laser sound. Like, I think if we went all out for this first one, it would be a bit um, too, like, I wouldn't say realistic because it lacked a lot of detail, but a bit too um, dark sci-fi. Uh, not so cartoony, and uh, this I think this fits well, uh, or at least much better. All right, so this is the base of our sound. Uh, I wonder what will happen if we mix the two together. Yeah, all right. Of course, the ending doesn't sound good. I think our start doesn't sound that good, actually, because it doesn't fit. It's a completely different type of sound. It's an FM sound, and this is... A subtractive sound, right? More. Actually, no, they are both FM sounds. <laughs> Just realized. Okay, but it's a different type. Uh, I think we need to duplicate our start again. And... Uh, and make a different version, okay? That will better fit that the original thing. The original thing. Uh, the middle, okay? The middle. Mm, all right, so let's do the, exactly the same thing as we did before. Just use a sign here. Disable all... Modulations. Make this low. Wow. That sounds cool. All right, now we just amplitude envelope the pitch. Didn't do that much, did it? Let's go extend range. Ah, oh, that's too much, I guess. Ha! Huh. Now it's too much, too. <laughs> it's very cool, but not for that. What about the first one? Can we amplitude... Uh, sorry. Modulate the pitch of that too? Extended range, yeah. How about lower? How about higher? How about much lower? How about much lower and lower this? Doesn't sound different at all! What the hell? What about different spit... different... What the hell? Okay, what I also don't like is that it fizzles out like it's end of beam. Maybe what we should do is actually use this for the end and let it fizzle out. All right, maybe I'm gonna copy this and put it on the end. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna just remove this and duplicate this note here and see what happens if we have that. <laughs> yeah, it all together sounds pretty cool now. This fizzle out is a bit too much, I guess. We need to, I think, shorten it. I wish this could be saved. Zoom, set, 50% as default, 150. Oh, wait, 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 we've got our... Yeah, I don't want that. Let's fizzle out faster. Ah, not that, nah. What the hell? Yeah, I need more range, okay? <laughs> hmm. Ha! 
<laughs> it's funny. Oh, I like that. Okay, just like a single blip. This is nice. I like that. Let's see if it works in context. <laughs> it sounds a bit like you're like plugging a pipe or something. <laughs> The, the bad thing is that it always sounds a little bit different. The synth isn't perfectly consistent on that. <sighs> okay, I think we can use this, but very delicately. Like, just as a touch. Also, what if we used reverb on that? Right now, what, what what if we just I don't know or, or modulated it? Uh, call ring modulator. <sighs> I'm just throwing stuff at the wall. Let's see what sticks. One amount low frequency. Okay, how does it sound? All right, it's a nice detail in the background, nothing. I want some of that Tinky winky, no, no. Uh, chimes, <laughs> chimes, okay, chimes. And I think I'm gonna use this laser beam middle, what is that actually? What if we change the note of that? Maybe it's still useful. Okay. What if we copy this ring modulator and put it there? Something strange is happening with the stereo field. Oh, because it has a, a stereo offset. That's why. What about this? Okay, I think that. Or I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if they're gonna like that because. That sounds very electric, wow. I'm not much like plasma. <laughs> Maybe I should use this kind of thing. Maybe let's duplicate that. Uh, and I'm gonna use the original, original. And then use this pitched up one. Just EQ it. Actually, LSPQ is is cool, so I'm gonna use that because uh, the highs are a bit painful in this one. And if I just could, yeah, tame that, it's gonna be it, it's it'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, now let's see if we can boost a little bit of the lower highs. Oh my goodness, no, that's get that gets painful too. All right, how about this? <laughs> okay, I like that. Got some layers, it's yay. 
I think we could maybe try and control the heist here as well. I, I think Surge is doing a really good job at sounding as analog as possible. That means it it really does evaluate the FM well. But what it does is creates a little bit of... Oh, nice. Ooh, yeah, I like that. How about another resonance? You see, all the rules of EQ don't apply if you're doing sound design. Like... You want to do narrow boosts? Sure. With sound design. Like, all these rules apply... are meant for mixing, really. Not for sound design. Sound design? Break all the rules. And do what sounds awesome. You know what I also go do is put a bunch of notches there. To make it sound more... computery, metallic, and... All right, what, what now? Actually, I could copy this EQ and paste it to that. This thing. See what happens there. Nothing, really. But we can offset it by, uh, say, a few semitones. Okay, I like that. What if we compress this really hard? Okay, a compressor maybe then? Uh, oh, it's pretty freaking loud. It's weird. Wait, something's wrong. Oh, of course. I'm applying this post-fader. Or pre-fader, sorry. Yeah, if I just hype as this, I guess that would be much easier to... do something. Let's make it sharper. I want a bit more height in this one. I want it to b bite a little bit more. Like, you know, it's it's the start, so it should, like, have a little bit more energy. Maybe not as much to be painful, but... All right, I think it's okay. <laughs> now, when you're doing sound, s s sounds of space, uh, it's always tempting to just uh, drown everything in reverb. The truth is, space doesn't have any reverb. Because <laughs> there's nothing to bounce the sound off or even convey the sound in space. There's no sound in space. All right. I still don't have these um, particles. <laughs> Let me copy some patch and try and do that. I think what I could do is use Argot Lunar. So let's maybe give ourselves a base to go off. What do we do? 
There's also envelopes that are step sequencers. Oh, we could sync this together and like make the chimes. Mm. So maybe let's use a comp filter and have the cutoff frequency be randomized. But have it be in sample and hold. What about 10 hertz? <laughs> okay, more resonance, please. All right, now we want this 10 hertz thingy, but applied to uh, a salt of oscillator. That's going to just change the amplitude of this whole thing. So I'm going to move this down and apply it there. Yep. So we get that. Is it chimes? Uh, let's change the mode. Stereo. Maybe add a bit of noise. Oh, interesting. I'm going to also apply this to the noise. I think I need a um, macro that would control the rate of these. Ah, no, 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 no. 10 hertz. And... Okay, now. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I wanted, but it sounds cool. That's all I know. <laughs> but how does it sound with the rest? Oh. Oh, it's on the end. Okay. If we had a global amplitude filled or os ampli amplitude envelope just maybe a bit longer. What the hell was that? Oh, our rate has messed up. Oh, okay, that's a problem. Does it? Huh. All right, I think I like that. Can we change the decay? Yeah. All right. Can I also change the stereo field a bit of that? Basically pan it around a little bit. Yeah, I guess. Can I copy this and paste it here? Oh, yeah, I can. Now let's just use this to affect the panning. Can I do it more? It works. <laughs> it does work. Wow. My goodness, that's really cool. I'm going to save this. Okay, so we have our sound of laser beam. Uh, we need to split it into three sounds. So how would we do that? Maybe I'm going to save this and... Actually, what I could do is just like have the original here and then maybe copy it somewhere else or maybe... See if I have enough room here after this reference. Because here we can see how it sounds like. 
And it's also like easy to export this with the video reference to demonstrate to the client what you're doing and if he likes that or not. So maybe I'm gonna copy that or even leave that in for now. And then we're gonna like export it. No, yeah, no I, I need to show you how to do this. So let's copy this, move it out of the way right here. And we'll separate it now. Okay, so the start things is this, this. Okay, these are the start things. All right, so let's create a re oh, CD markers range. And I'm actually going to steal this name and remove it with shift right click. I'm gonna put it here. Start, okay. Now there's middle. If I unsolo the start. And there's the end. All right. Start, end. I'm gonna make it. And there's middle. Now, how do we do the middle? Because the middle is gonna be the tricky one because it has to loop seamlessly, okay? Uh, so what I do is uh, I bounce this to audio on a different track. And also I want to stretch the notes so we have more of that. So we can find a pattern. All right, now I'm going to create a new track, Control shift n make an audio, a stereo audio track, and I'm gonna call this Looped. Oh, I created it on, it's on the end, I should have created it on the start. Uh, now I'm going to simply feed the master input to it. I'm gonna feed it to output one and two right away. So not to master, because otherwise we're gonna have a feedback loop, all right? So now I'm gonna root master to feed to the looped track. So here I'm gonna just go master out and now I'm feeding. I can record the master output. So if I mute it, uh, we can play this back. All right, and now we have this bounce, okay? Now, ever, if I ever wanted to like redo something, replace it, I just need to re-record this part. What I do now is mute these regions so that only the loop, the bounce, the bounced version plays. That's it's important for exporting the project because if I don't, then, um, well, we get double the sound and it's messed up. I'm also gonna mute, send this to playback so you can hear what we're doing with this looped one. All right, now let's loop it seamlessly. So what I'll do is cut off the start. I think this part sounds the most familiar, like the most similar, sorry, to the end. So I'm gonna cut it here. And now I'm going to overlay this on, on the front so that this is exactly where our our uh, ending is. And now I'm going to try and find a similar spot to mix this, blend this with it, with that. Maybe that's gonna be it. You can see some similarities in the waveforms, but not, not too much. I'm gonna make a crossfade now. Okay, let's... Uh, We have a little bit of a pause and I'm not sure if that's because it is not playing correctly or is is it not done correctly. So what I'm gonna do is go to edit preferences, transport, looping, loop fades, crossfade, loop, start and end. 
no fades at loop boundaries. I think that's what I want because I don't want Ardor to like sugar this, sugarcoat this, and I just want to hear how it sounds. Okay, I think we're cutting a little bit too late, and what it ha what happens is. Okay, now that's better. All right, what we can do is uh, simply extend this a little bit, cut again, and move this to the start. Some sounds don't really need precise crossfades. Sometimes you just do whatever and it works. <laughs> but for some sounds, you need to be very precise. I'm gonna cut it here and move it there, and we're gonna crossfade on this section, okay? I'm gonna now loop that. All right, it sounds perfectly looping. So yeah, I'm gonna create a region or a range around that and beam loop. Okay, let's try and verify this. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna export. So Alt-E is gonna show us the export dialog. Now, channels is important because we're gonna export the master but also the looped because we want both the sounds that play through the master bus as the sounds that play from the looped uh, track to be exported. If I didn't select that, this would be missing, okay? Now, let's create a new preset for the exporting. And what I wanna do is like, we don't need 24 bit. We want 16 bit, let's be shape noise, dither. It doesn't really matter that much. Session rate, lossless linear wave. And this name is no, no, no use. And I also wanna trim silence at start and trim silence at end so that we will remove the unnecessary zero digital digital black or digital noise digital silence sorry from our and i'm gonna call this sfx exp yeah um uh, we could also try and normalize it but i don't think it's a good idea because um it's gonna mess up with the levels we set up in the session and it would be better to like make sure the levels are correct and what i would do is create um like a master, um, master even either an amplitude amplifier plugin on the master bus, or just amplify the trim on the master bus. Uh, this this thing here. Uh, yeah, we can do it because we're, we have this export dialog open, and then like adjust the, the the levels of individual sound effects so they sound good together. And because normalization is going to be automatically do some stuff, but it might not be good in the context of the game and, and the balance. Like, not all sounds should be the same loudness, even if we use LUFS. Uh, well, I don't know, because... This effects. Because you can use loudness and use your LUFS to normalize, but we don't want that because, yeah, it's it, we might not want everything to be perfectly... Uh, leveled. Now... We don't have a limiter on the master bus, but I'm gonna export it and just see what happens, okay? Let's do it. Wait a moment, we're doing this it wrong. Uh, what I'm exporting is, like, I didn't check the time span and we have the session range. We don't want that. We want the beam, start, loop, and end. All right, and it seems that the automatic silence truncation didn't really do the, the great job. Future Anfa here. Long after recording this video, I have learned what the problem is, and I've recorded a separate tutorial about looping sound effects where I tackled this. Here's a short instruction, which you can use to fix this problem. I didn't know this solution in the past, so I carry on doing silly things. Sorry. 
Let's try it again. I'm going to add the truncation again and export and see what happens. Okay, that's a bit better. I think I think this is really not a problem. If it is. What we could do is simply bounce everything to audio and truncate it manually. Now, I'm not sure why this loop isn't perfectly ending. Maybe it's just a problem. It's, it's just an error of the analysis. So I'm going to open this folder where the files are exported and I'm going to open this up in Audacity. And really with looped sound effects or music, music loops, um, you really need to do that. Basically verify if the sound does play like you would want it to. All right. And actually the sound ends very well. Let's do an ultimate test. Let's copy this. Right arrow, paste, right arrow, paste, and we can hear now. We will listen if this if it if it does loop. Now wait, you can't hear it. It loops perfectly. There is no gap whatsoever. And even if I zoom in here, you can see what happens. It goes to zero, and these are the tiny fades that Arrow creates. I'm going to show it to you. So I'm going to verify these two files, and maybe this black space here is not really there. Maybe it's just Arrow, like, I don't know, adding some padding to the visualization or the analysis, but it's not really in the file. We're going to verify this in a while. But I want to show you what happens with the fades. So you see, by default, everything when you cut it, everything has a crossfade. There's a minimum length of a crossfade. And this is what helps remove a click between the sounds. Now we could actually remove that, deactivate this fade, and let's try it and see what happens. Because sometimes it can give you a better result. Because we actually cut this file or cut this recording so the samples should match perfectly between the start and the end but it would create a little bit of click if you start the sound and end it. So actually it's a better way to do this. Sometimes you may want to do away with this automatic fade because it might mess something up. If you have like a very consistent and static drone sound and you find the zero crossing yourself and you don't want, and that little fade is messing something up and you can hear it, then maybe it's a good idea to do it. I'm gonna hit Alt S and I'm gonna just re-export the beam loop. All right, I'm going to go back to Audacity. And actually, I'm not going to close that. I'm just going to... I'm just going to import it again on a different track. And hopefully we'll be able to compare it. Yeah, so we can see now... Here we have a fade, it goes to silence. Here it doesn't go to silence. And what happens if I copy and paste this? Will it perfectly match? I am not exactly sure. But let's, let's listen. Now I can't hear a difference between the two. And it's probably because the sound is very rich in all the kinds of frequency content and it could be masking the clicks. Either way, both versions are good and they will loop perfectly in a game engine. Now let's investigate the other two sounds that are not supposed to loop. So start and end, but are supposed to start with a sharp thing. Okay, and we actually do have uh, something here. And I wonder why we don't have perfect silence and why is it starting, you know, with a delay? Uh, how big of a delay? Not that much, but it's gonna add up. Also, what is this delay? Weird. Oh, I know what it is. You know what? Let's... Maybe normalize this file. 
and see if is there anything here. Let's normalize this. Okay, there is actual dithering sound, dithering noise. I think this is dithering noise. This gives me an idea. Maybe what is messing up our truncation is dithering. I'm gonna try and disable dither and re-export our sound effects. Okay, this doesn't look any better. Verify. Okay, we still have this delay. Six minutes later. Let's try it again! No, it's, it's there. Nothing changed. Another four minutes later. All right, let's now see if actual truncation works because we have silence. We know there's digital silence, but will it actually truncate? Wow, it does! Holy sweet... My goodness! Finally. Finally, this now is going to be actually starting when it should. Can you see that? There's no silence in the start. And that's what you want. You don't want your sounds to start two frames after you press a button because it's gonna feel sloppy and weird. You want them to start immediately. And that's what you get. Okay, now the thing is, we don't have a limiter here and we might, we will need one. So I'm gonna go LSP limiter stereo. <sighs> and we want to apply it after the dithering, after the gate. Actually, no, we wanna apply it before all that because Dithering is not going to uh, increase any clipping. Gate is not going to increase any clipping. Now, the problem with uh, limiters is that they apply, that they add a delay. What it's called look ahead. <laughs> and what it does is the limiter applies five milliseconds of attack. And also it delays the actual signal is processing by five milliseconds, but it's evaluating it. This is the, the amount of delay. So it's delaying the sound it processes, but not the sound it analyzes. So it analyzes the sound in real time and it sees, oh, there's a peak. Let's start attenuating. But the attenuated signal is delayed by five milliseconds. So when it finishes attenuation after five milliseconds of attack, it's just hitting that peak in the actual processed signal. Okay, never mind. I've explained this in a different video. It helps smooth out the stuff because you don't have attenuation that happens over 0 0.001 millisecond, but it always happens in a time of 5 milliseconds. But because of the look-ahead delay, um, it's not like the peaks are escaping you. And they would normally. All right, let's enable full oversampling. Also, this one has dithering, and I could use this one maybe. Let's use this dither and not just another dither. Not, not just another dither or not just another CD. I could also boost the signal, so we could lower the threshold. So we're hitting something. Okay, how much are we boosting? Uh, about seven decibels. Let's go with seven decibels. And also I'm going to out lower the output by one decibel, so we have a a little bit of margin, okay? Ah, we're not hitting the limit anymore. I wanna hit the limit. Nah. I think this is a bit loud. I shouldn't be that loud, actually. So I'm gonna turn it down. I would want to. Oh, it's these. Ah, uh, it's our envelopes or LFOs messing up. That's what's happening. You see, this is the problem we have with Surge LV2. It's not perfectly going well. Uh, this rate is messed up. Okay, do we use this envelope? Actually, yeah, we use it. Hmm. Never mind. Let's copy it over and change this rate to 10 hertz. Make this affect the rate. Wow! Wrong, it didn't. 
I didn't click it through well enough. Now, now it, now it's, what the hell? All right, okay, okay, this is good. Is it good? Is it good, though? <laughs> and what this now would want to do, what we want this to do is change the noise amount and this note. Okay, and this thing, we, this thing, we don't want it to do anything. Clear all routings. Okay, and it's crazy freaking loud. Oh, and is our, oh, because this thing also messed up. Okay, so LFOs higher than LFO3 are not working correctly. All right. Now we don't want, we don't need these two, so we can replace them. I'm gonna move this and change this to the cutoff. Yeah. Good. Oh no, it wasn't cutoff. It was panning. Okay. And this thing. Sorry. This this thing. Let's clear all voice routings. All right. Good. Hope it's fixed. And we can make it quieter. All right, let's save this, export again. Whew, exporting quite a lot. And now we will verify if our... What the hell? Our new way of dithering didn't perfectly work with the truncation, okay? After I've reported this problem, Ardor developers changed the defaults, so recent versions of Ardor come with the noise trimming threshold at negative 90 decibels, instead of the old negative infinity. However, if you've imported all your configuration files, you may need to change that anyway. And it's perfect. <laughs> now, wait. Huh, somehow this, this, this patch just re re went back. Alright, let's fix it. Oh, you know what? Let's not. I'm gonna do this with Argot Lunar as I intended. Argot Lunar is a very nice um, granular processing plugin. That means it splits the audio into short chunks and processes each chunk separately. What it allows us to do is do things like randomly delay a chunk. Or randomly pitch shift a chunk. Or randomly pan a chunk. We can also do feedback so it runs the chunks again. We can also have more chunks. <laughs> what is that though? I don't know. You can also make the chunks a little bit quieter. I, I said quieter. All right. All right, I think it will do. Let's see what happens if we play it with our video reference. Because you see, we have our original regions, original media regions still intact in here, so we can play it. All right. It is a little bit too long. I may maybe too too quiet, too wide, too, too too loud. Yeah. I think we could also pitch it more up, or even use a bandpass filter that would be randomly up and maybe make it quiet. All right, nice. I like that. Cool. You know, it's a very tiny detail and probably in the context of the game and, and you know, hot action, it's not going to be noticeable, but just a few times when you fire this laser in complete silence and you're going to hear it and you're going to be like, ooh, that's, that's detail. detail. Let's save it. Let's export again. I think it's a bit quiet. Uh, let's try it again. Yeah, nice. Like it. Good. That's one sound done. And we're 
one hour and 40 minutes in. Uh, real time. Uh, this might have been shorter if I edited out some crap. Uh, let's do another one. But you know what? I think I'm gonna take a break first. And also see if everything is recording properly. Uh, see you in a while. Who won? What happens next? Are we ever going to find out? It's up to you.